Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for November 14, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, man succumbs after altercation amidst a family dispute over land. A man who police say was among relatives embroiled in an alleged six-year family dispute over land and houses succumbed on Sunday after he was chopped during an altercation on Saturday. Police named him as Sheldon Brown, 48, a resident of Marshall's Pen in Mandeville. However, residents say he resided in the neighboring community of Magtown. A senior police source told the news that investigators are probing whether his death is linked to the alleged family dispute. A police report said about 10.45 p.m. on Saturday, Brown had an altercation with a man when he was chopped several times. He was assisted to the hospital where he was being treated before succumbing. The now deceased brother, Michael, 48, otherwise called Jimmy, was killed on January 19, about 12.20 a.m., while in bed, four days after laying their 74-year-old mother to rest. Another relative, Lemon Brown, who police named as a brother of the deceased, was charged with murder following the incident. However, residents say he is a cousin of the deceased. Driver involved in fatal West Marlanda crash to turn himself into police. A senior superintendent of police has confirmed that the driver who reportedly fled at the scene of a fatal collision in Bluefields, West Marland on Monday, has made arrangements to turn himself in. The attorney for the driver has made contact with the police and made arrangements to bring him in this morning. Head of the West Marland Police Division, Senior Superintendent Wayne Josephs, told the news on Tuesday morning. The police have also identified the five persons who died in the accident. The deceased are 65-year-old O'Neill Allen, otherwise called a dummy, and his mother, Angela Samuels, both of Mount Edgecombe Farm District, 39-year-old Petrina Wallace, and her 15-year-old daughter, Lavicia Forrester, both of Gordon District White House, and the 54-year-old Janet Thompson of Mac Alpine District, all in West Marland. Forrester is said to have attended Petersfield High School. According to the police reports, about 3.30 p.m., the taxi with six people on board was traveling towards a White House when the vehicle it was traveling behind slowed down. The cab driver swerved collided with a truck that was traveling in the opposite direction and ended up in a tree. Three of the occupants of the NOAA died on the scene, while the two that were transported to the hospital succumbed to their injuries on Monday night. St. Mary Pradel Larsney Unit Without a Vehicle The Pradel Larsney Unit in St. Mary is now immobile due to an accident on the Coleraine Main Road on the weekend. The unit oversees 20 communities in St. Mary. Members of the unit said they were on routine patrol in the area when the vehicle's wheel came into contact with the gravel and the driver lost the control. The vehicle overturned. No one was injured. Team members are now concerned that they will be unable to effectively police St. Mary at a time of year when there is typically a spike in the theft of livestock. Mackenzie warns developers against the breaching building procedures. Desmond Mackenzie, Minister of Local Government and Community Development, has issued a stern warning against illegal construction activities, stating that those involved will be held accountable. I am giving notice that local authorities will not tolerate illegal construction, nor will we accept criticism from those suggesting that entities are accepting bribes to facilitate such activities, he said. He also highlighted a worrisome practice among some larger-scale developers who, after securing approval for a specific number of units, deviated from approved plans during construction. They use drywall partitions and various methods to bypass the approval process, he explained. To enhance building procedure enforcement, Mackenzie announced that his ministry will increase the number of employed building officers in the island's municipal corporations, strengthening their capacity to enforce the building approval procedures. The move is necessary due to an increasing number of construction projects taking place without proper approvals, ranging from small-scale projects to massive developments. We are increasing the number of building officers to better respond effectively. With the current staffing levels, it is impossible to adequately monitor developments across the country, 
he noted. Mackenzie, speaking at the recent seat and municipal corporation's staff awards and retirement banquet at Hibiscus Lodge Hotel in Utrios, stressed the importance of adhering to established approval processes and called for collective responsibility in enforcing these approvals. The role and the emphasis on proper building observation and adherence to approvals is not just the responsibility of local authorities alone, he contended. Lastly, Mackenzie reminded the public that approval is also needed for building demolitions. Eyewitness recounts horrifying moments after St. Mary Boat tragedy. Last Saturday was meant to be a day of joy and a celebration for a group of 25 young individuals from the corporate area who ventured to St. Mary for a beach and river excursion. However, it tragically transformed into one of the most devastating days of their lives. According to the organizer of the trip, Kim, the group was initially in high spirits upon reaching Strawberry Field together in Robbins Bay. Their enthusiasm was directed towards a river located about 15 minutes from the beach, prompting them to promptly enlist the services of a boat captain with a small vessel on the shore. The boat captain cautioned that the boat could only accommodate eight persons at a time. Despite this limitation, Latifa Lati Robinson and the six others boarded the small boat for the first of three intended trips. Unfortunately, moments into the journey, the vessel capsized. Kim, who was on the shore, recounted the unsettling moment when a member of the group realized that something had gone terribly wrong with the boat. One of my friends said the boat turned over. We walk up a bit closer, but it never looked like it turned over. We walked to the other side and we still like them and wave up them hand, she told the news. Seconds later, she got a frantic call from a friend who was on the boat that the vessel had indeed capsized. She said by this time, the lifeguards were already rushing to the scene. Kim said although they were in a state of shock and panic, they walked through the mangroves, hoping to get closer to their struggling friends who were fighting to get back to shore. One person reached on the shore and me hugged him up and start crying. Him actually swim to shore, and after that, me see the lifeguard them start carrying everybody else. So me start ask, which part la today? And nobody never did a answer. Me ask again, and then someone tell me say, she did a panic and them a try hold on panar. And when she go down, she don't come back. After that, me just faint way, Kim said. The 21-year-old has not been seen since. A search and a rescue operation, which involved the police and the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard, was affected by poor visibility and rough seas over the past two days. Family members of the missing woman fear the worst has happened. Sitting on their veranda in Washington Gardens, St. Andrew, two of Robinson's siblings could not help but refer to her in the past tense. They said Robinson was making plans to celebrate her 22nd birthday with all nine of her older siblings on December 7. We had a WhatsApp group where we were organizing our party. She's the smallest and she wanted all of us to go out along with her close friends and go to a restaurant and so on, said a tearful Latanya Johnson. Our mother died last year and she was very depressed about it. So from that, she would work and just go out sometimes and live our best life. On Friday, she sent me some money and told me that she wanted me to keep it for her and that was our last conversation. I didn't know that she was going on a trip or anything, Johnson added. The siblings said Robinson was the life of the party and they knew how to put smiles on their faces. Fast food outlet robbed twice in three weeks. Customers and employees were robbed at a gunpoint on Sunday afternoon at a fast food outlet in the corporate area, the second robbery in less than three weeks at the establishment. In both robberies, the thieves got away with more than $100,000 in cash. Senior Superintendent Marlon Nesbeth, head of the St. Andrew Central Police Division, told the news that in the latest incident, which took place about 3.30 p.m., gunmen entered the establishment and stole $31,000 from the establishment, $56,000 from the manager, and $17,000 from three employees, along with their cell phones. Nesmith also confirmed that the establishment was robbed on October 28, about 9.50 p.m., when gunmen stole $450,000 from the establishment and more than $100,000 from employees, along with their cell phones, as well as $20,000 
and the U.S. $150, approximately $23,000 from a customer. We have some leads that we are following up on as to various aspects of the perpetrators and who they may be, so we are continuing our efforts around that, and certainly we appeal for any information that can be forthcoming from the public, Nesbeth said. He added that in both robberies, no one was hurt and the police have increased the security around the area.